Hey folks, welcome back here to my channel Whiskey Visma. My name is Christopher and for my seventh review I chose this independently bottled Glenlivet. Not very old, 10 years of age, bottled by Signatory Vintage, but not um, yeah, with their regular um, or as their regular bottling series and, and product line, but instead a new one introduced by the German importer of many different whiskies, uh, Kirsch whiskey import, and um, they dubbed this small batch, small so um, small batch release. And this is the first of this small batch line, and um, yeah, was released last year, 2017. So distilled 2007, and with that, 10 years of age. Uh, small batch releases have the, um, or the, uh, the mainstay of small batch releases, of course, the marrying of different types of casks, but a limited amount. So not um, anywhere close to the number you need for official bottlings or any, um, you know, or something similar. So in this case, they married five different sherry casks, two first fill sherry butts and three first fill sherry hogsheads together, um, all distilled you know, in March and April of 2007. So um, the color quite nice. Um, I'll have something in my glass over here. And um, so, yeah, signatory vintage, of course, one of the largest independent bottlers in Scotland next to Gordon and MacPhail and they unlike many of the smaller ones don't have to go to distilleries outright and buy already matured casks directly from the supplier but instead they buy their own casks empty casks and then buy new make spirit fill them on site and then and then um, transport them to their own warehouse and signatories of of course quite well known for having um, a huge yeah, warehouse with more, well more than 10,000 casts waiting to be bottled and lots and lots of yeah, gems in there and um, quite interesting whiskies were released over the years and you know, since the 30 year anniversary of Signatory Vintage um, is actually this year there are quite a few amazing whiskies on the market of course all way too expensive for the average consumer but if you have the chance then join a bottle split and uh, try to get a hold of a sample or two from that line but now coming back here to this one a small batch Glenlivet as I said the first one uh, was a new series introduced last year the current one was released just a couple weeks ago and is an 11 year old Balechin so a peated Edredauer um, once again product of the, of the marriage of, I believe this time, of three different casks, two bourbon barrels and a sherry cask. So color-wise, nice golden amber, not chill filtered, no color and edit of course. And now I'll get to the nose, the palette and then mark this one. It's a very classic PX nose, something I find in Quite a number of of modern young sherry malts. It's whiny. It's sweet. The distillery character is still present in a way that you have lots of oranges here. That is quite characteristic for Glenlivet. Orange marmalade, but the cast did not in introduce any sort of bitterness here. So I reckon it's Quercus alba. American white oak, which um, explain the rather well affordable price when it was released last year of 50 euros. On secondary market, this bottle is already at one, 100 euros, approximately 90 to 100. And there the value for money is of course diminishing fast. But the nose, as I said, rather sweet, whiny, um, overt, orange marmalade, quite buttery, a little bit of perfumed oak, once again, no bitterness at all, pretty, 
very, pretty you know, amazing, amazingly clear and crisp dried fig note. And usually you, know, you try to decide is it dates, is it figs, is it um, raisins, is it prunes. But here it's quite clearly figs. And also a little bit of incense, oak incense. Not in a way um, that it's, it's too yeah, soft woody, pine needles and all that. Not at all. Um, sort of a balancing act between, between um, oak dust and oak that was freshly cut. Only the tiniest hints of, of actual sap. But the no, toffee, oranges, and dried figs are really what stands out here. Alright, show the taste. With 48.1% on a relatively young malt like this, only 10 years of age, the arrival is pretty bold, you know, quite punchy. Tingling sensations, in particular at the front of your tongue, and then your oral cavity is filled with oak. But just to reiterate, no bitterness. It's just, yeah, now it's, it's drying a little bit on the back. But it goes down warming, very pleasant. And you know, lots of fusile oils in there. Good distillation, definitely. Not too clean, not too neutered. A little bit of eucalyptus on the palate as well. Menthol, mint chocolate, high milk content, so milk, mint milk chocolate. And on my nose now, I'm having had my, my sip, the toffee and the sweetness, the buttery components, they become much, much stronger. And things like those sour, sweet, winey notes, they recede a little bit. The nose is absolutely fantastic. Good example of what young dist even young distillations can um, can do with good casts. Now for the finish. Control, orange liqueurs, toffee, buttery, buttery oak. And on the finish, it's medium, I, I would say. Now the oak stays for quite a while. Warm mint chocolate, no bitterness, toffee, and so sort of condensed oak syrup. I'm not quite sure whether there is something like this. I mean, Suppliers, syrup su suppliers like Monin, for instance, they basically have every flavor imaginable as a, as a syrup. So why not oak? This is what I imagine oak syrup would taste like. But then, of course, uh, accompanied by this heavy sweetness. It's nice whiskey. For 50 euros, absolute steal. And... Um, at that price, highly recommended. But as I said, it's not available anymore. It was only a bottle for Germany in the first place, um, and on the secondary market now, 90 to 100 euros. And I think this is a little too much for a whiskey of this age and specs. But nonetheless, well made product. I think the nose is ultimately the best part of this. Um, but the palate can offer quite a bit as well. It's just it's somehow very pleasant to drink, it never gets tired. And 
too boring. And this is what these or what this bottling series was meant to be, not to, not not something to collect and stash away, but instead to enjoy and drink. And um, this is what I'm doing. So now to mark this. So as I said, nose is the ultimately the best part, which um, definitely is a 90 territory for me. But then on the palette, it lacks a little bit of complexity and um, variety. But this is just due to the uh, rather um, young age, of course, and probably um, you know, cheaply. No, cheaply is not the, not the best word for it. But the um, the way they prepared those sherry casks was probably not the most expensive and um, yeah exclusive way so that um, you could have actually a product um, with this pro yeah, with that, that pri price point. So um, nose, best part, 90 territory, on the palette it loses a point, so overall it is 98 out of 100. Um, nice whiskey, very well deserved mark in my eyes. And uh, the second edition or the, the next in in the series that was released this year is a Balechin of 11 years old, once again a marriage of three different casts. I have it as a sample, um, but I will probably not get the chance to review it here on camera. Um, but I do have quite a number of nice reviews coming up, so stay tuned. And uh, leave me a like, a comment or a subscribe and you know, um, all I can say is have a nice week and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.